Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. It has been discussed by many that Bigfoot is likely a Gigantopithecus or an ancestor of Giganto. This is called by some, including the BFRO, the Bigfoot Giganto theory. Their theory is that this is a Gigantopithecus or a successor of Giganto. I am torn on that matter, but before I get into the likelihood of either direction, let's examine Gigantopithecus blackie. Giganto lived in the Miocene era and went extinct in the early Pleistocene. It lived in the tropics of South Asia. Giganto is in the subfamily of hominoid called Pongidae. The only known surviving member of Pongidae is the orangutan. True to the Bigfoot parallel, we know very little about Giganto. All we have of Giganto is three partial jaw bones, a skull fragment, and a couple hundred teeth. How the creature's size was determined is not rocket science. Dr. Russell Chohan of the Smithsonian Institute used the mandible and skull fragment to generate a likely skull size. He then averaged ape skull to body ratios at 1 to 6.5. The gorilla's skull to body ratio is 1 to 8, but Chohan was more conservative with Giganto because it may have had disproportionately larger jaws due to its diet of bamboo. Using skull to body ratios of known apes, Chohan conservatively put Giganto around 9.5 feet tall erect and 1,100 pounds. This immense size made it unlikely that Giganto was prey to any predator. Dental analysis show that Giganto was a specialized herbivore. It basically ate nothing but bamboo, like the giant panda today. Bamboo is an unstable food source. It is extremely susceptible to disease and damage due to subtle changes in temperature or moisture. Most scientists think that a depleting environment and food source due to climate change brought about by the Pleistocene ended Giganto's existence. Other scientists have said that they were hunted to extinction by prehistoric man. Now it is very important to remember that fully modern, anatomically modern Homo sapiens were contemporaries with Giganto. We lived at the same time. Giganto went extinct 100,000 years ago, and fully modern people like you and I have been around for a minimum of 200,000 years. And as a note, I fully reject the premise that human predation was a factor in wiping out Giganto. I reject that fully because, man, you would get one shot with your spear or your atlatl, and only one, because once your location was given away, and if that one throw wasn't a kill shot, which I doubt it would be, you would be done. So if Bigfoot is a successor of Giganto, it has changed since the fossils we have recovered. Despite how all the Bigfoot shows like to depict Giganto, there is no evidence that it was a biped, and there is evidence that it was a quadruped. Its mandibles flare away from each other to create a width that is generally reserved for a windpipe coming straight across to the mouth and not coming from beneath like a biped. As I mentioned earlier, Giganto was a specialized herbivore. Its diet consisted almost entirely of bamboo. This is very different from Sasquatch. Bigfoot, as we know it today, must be classified as a generalist, as there are reports of it gathering berries, eating lichen, hunting deer, catching rodents, and even eating fish and mollusks. So the Bigfoot Giganto theory cannot be that Giganto is a Bigfoot. The two creatures are very different. The Bigfoot Giganto theory must be that Giganto evolved, adapted, or changed to become what we now call Sasquatch or Bigfoot. This theory, in my opinion, must be contingent upon Giganto being a reactive character to its environment, its environment being defined by the introduction of a warming climate and modern people. It does appear that the stage was ideally set for Giganto to change or adapt into what we know as Bigfoot. All of that in consideration, this is what the Bigfoot Giganto theory must be in order for it to be real. The Pleistocene brought Homo sapiens to South Asia. Giganto stayed clear from human commotion and fire. As the climate continued to rise, the lowland jungles turned into savanna or swamp. Giganto was forced to move up into the mountains, finding a more tropical environment at higher elevations, where bamboo was still able to grow, and even further away from the grasslands where humans thrive. He learned that staying away from our tools and our fire is the key to survival. After all, it is likely that Giganto had the largest brain of any terrestrial mammal ever. Giganto's changing environment caused Giganto to change itself. In order to survive in a world with humans, it changed its behavior to be active at night, when human eyes become useless. It learned that killing a human only brought more humans, but merely being seen meant no humans came back. He adapted to walk on two legs to get from elevation to elevation. Giganto spent tens of thousands of years adapting to be invisible to humans, merely as a means to survival. Perhaps that included moving away from people. Maybe they simply got out of Dodge when humans showed up, and they were one step ahead of us as we migrated over the Bering Strait into North America. Throughout this time, they learned that the key to survival is surviving where people can't. Scientists argue that there is no fossil record of anything like Giganto in North America. But think about it. Something with the brain the size of a football is not getting stuck in a tar pit. Maybe they bury their dead as to not give away the location of the living. Elephants have grieving ceremonies. Maybe Giganto does too. Maybe even in the form of burial or cannibalism. It all seems awful far-fetched. But isn't the existence of Bigfoot itself far-fetched? I don't know. I don't really support this theory, but it still seems to be the best one out there. 
If Giganto is Bigfoot, it has changed a lot since the fossils we have found, but there is nothing as stable as change. Animals are constantly changing. It is too slow to notice in the moment, but significant changes do occur over tens of thousands of years. Do you think modern Bigfoot is a descendant of Gigantopithecus? I would really appreciate your input, and thanks a lot for listening.